Well, today we went down and picked up an old golf cart at a really good price. An old gas golf cart. I think it's a guy told me it was an 88 model gas. It uh, does not run. I hooked a jump box to it and wouldn't do anything at all. But for the price, it really looks pretty good. So I'm going to start tearing into this thing and see why it will not start. So the wiring has definitely been, definitely been kind of just butchered a little bit. Nowhere near as bad as I've seen before. I mean, really, it's not too bad. It looks like they added some lights up here and there's wires here and there and everywhere. So I'm going to trace these out and get those disconnected and see what I can figure out what's going on. So if I can get this thing running, it's going to be an awesome deal. But we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to just kind of trace out the wiring and everything on this just to check it. And the wires actually test out pretty good. And I've got power to one side of my switch and then comes back on that other side of the switch and then comes down here to what I assume is another switch or circuit board. Oh, I'm sorry, that is the forward and reverse switch. So when you got it in neutral and forward, it sends power. So, and then it comes down to the lever right, if I get it to focus, right in here. And this right here, if you hit your gas pedal, it raises up. I'm gonna try my best to get the camera to focus on it. It's gonna be kind of tricky. But if you can see right there, where it comes up, right, right here is a switch. And that switch right there is what sends power to your solenoid and that switch right there was stuck. So I just played with it a little bit and now whenever I push the pedal, I don't know if you can hear it, but it clicks. So that's what sends power to the solenoid. So I've got it to turn over now. I'm working on the gas. It uh, was getting gas in there, but I didn't really want to suck all this old gas. It's been setting for, he said it's been setting for about two, a little over two years, so I know that gas is no good. I don't want to go ahead. And I took a little hand vacuum pump for, you know, like bleeding brakes and everything. It took me a little while, but there wasn't a whole lot of gas in there. And I got all the gas out of there. And that obviously will connect up there. But I'm going to change these fuel filters out right now because they're obviously pretty old and pretty brown. So you got one going to the inlet side of your fuel pump which is right there. And then this smaller one right here going to the outlet of the fuel pump. So I'm gonna get these taken off and I'm gonna go up to the hardware store up here and see what all I can find. Hopefully they'll have the right filters. But you just slide those off and these things are a bugger to get off. You just kinda gotta wiggle them and pull and wiggle them and pull and say a few curse words and it'll eventually come off. So this hose right here looks a little dry rotten so I'm gonna probably get some more hose. I think that's 5 16 So I'm gonna get these off and try to see if I can find some more. I hope to get this thing maybe running today. I obviously have some issues with my uh, linkages here. I said this thing was running but I'm not convinced because you see as I push the gas pedal the linkage just goes right through. It doesn't actually move the block or the throttle, which should move out like that as it goes, but you can see it just kind of slides right through. So I'm going to see if they've got some more uh, cable blocks up there as well. All right, so I took that old metal line out of here and I've got a new quarter inch line ran and I've got it zip tied up real tight back here where it can't get near the belt right here. So right here is the pump. And this line right here, you can see if I bend it, it's pretty rotten. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a new one. 
And before I take that off, I want to go ahead and clean that off so I don't have any junk. I'm going to just take some carbon choke cleaner. Exactly. Thoughtless, but we got a lot of that junk off. But we gotta pull that arm off. It's gonna fall down into the pump. So we got that loosened up oh, a little bit. It's really hard to get to right there. I don't think I quite got it enough. So I'm gonna try to loosen it just a little more. That does. All right, there it is. Now I'm gonna take a piece from the pump straight here and I'm gonna do that little filter I don't think it's really doing any good I've got the big one here that'll catch pretty much everything so all right well I've been doing a little bit of work on this thing and pretty much what I've done is I took the carburetor off and cleaned it out and it was all gummed up horribly bad so we got that squared away got that cleaned up and now I want to see I charged the battery all night last night and got my battery checker here no nope. so the battery is bad so, so I'm gonna hit the gas here and you can see when I hit the gas it drops it down to five volts so the battery is obviously bad so we're gonna jerk that out of here get us a new one and this is a group 75 which they do have higher cranking amps but as you can see this thing is crammed in here. The terminal is actually hitting this on this side. So I may get one size down because even my little jump box, it turns over pretty good. So um, first thing we got to do is we got to get all this out of here. Take this hose clamp loose here. And of course it's starting to rain. Take this off here. up on that and there's your air filter and your housing now you've got access to your terminals into your battery so I'm just gonna loosen the terminals up half inch wrench and I'm gonna slide this thing out I'm gonna definitely clean and see all the corrosion rust on these terminals if I can find some more terminals like this I'm probably just gonna get some new ones if not I'm gonna definitely get them cleaned up quite a bit because that's not gonna help anything a lot of times these things are real tight you can't can't move them so you take a screwdriver right there on the end just kind of pry it apart a little bit and now it comes right off I think if this is my negative it's obviously my positive and it's really tight to get the wrench in there. So if you take the negative off first and the positive's in a bad spot, you don't get any spark. And if you leave the negative attached, you're gonna get one heck of a spark whenever your wrench just touches the frame. Well, I was having a heck of a time with this thing because it's so tight. Pulled up on this a little bit and that just pops right out. And I've got quite a bit of room now to work as well. More than a head. Still pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Got that one loosened up. It's still pretty tight. Okay. All right. Now, take it up. Get a new battery. All right. As you can see, these things are pretty nasty. So I'm gonna take a wire brush and wire brush them down a little bit. I'll take that bolt off and clean them up. And then I'm gonna spray them with some terminal protector keep these things good and clean so and i found i couldn't find a group 70 battery or i'm sorry 75 or 70 for that matter so they had them at autozone but they were like 150 dollars i wasn't quite wanting to spend that on a battery so i went to walmart and i got the 26r 49 dollars so we'll see how long it lasts and it's still got 
540 cranking amps, cold cranking amps, so it ought to do the trick for a third of the price. Worth giving it a try. If it doesn't work, it'll be a live well pump battery on the boat, and then we'll have to just shell out the money for a better one. But worth a try. Okay, so I got the little 26 battery in there, and it actually fits a whole lot nicer than that 75. I know it doesn't have the cranking amps. The other one had 600. But hey, for 50 bucks, I'll give it a try. So I got my terminals all cleaned up. I had to a little bit of WD-40 on the bolts because they were completely seized and so I'm going to clean those up a little bit more and then I'm going to squirt the terminals real good with some battery protector and I'll squirt these once I get this I'm going to wipe some of that grease off and clean them up a little more and we should be roll rocking and rolling ready to turn this thing over got the battery in there it's pretty good still a little snug but it fits it pushes back on the can a little bit only because it's got the bulges for the handle unfortunately but it fits pretty good so we got some fresh gas in there got about a couple gallons in there let's see if this thing will turn over hey it turns over so there's a start. Now I'm gonna put the seat on and see if I can get this thing going. All right, I was having a little bit of trouble there. I could not work the clutch. Somebody put some zebra duct tape on and hit the gas at the same time and hold my phone. So let's see what happens here. Uh -oh. I pulled the top off this golf cart. Apparently, the guy told me a limb falling down and it ended up pretty bad. So, I tried to take it apart. This is going to be pretty tricky to straighten out, but I'm going to give it a go because it's kind of warped in the middle where the water just kind of stays in it. So, what I did, there's two rivets right here. This one's already broken, but I drilled the other one out. And this piece right here just pops off. Comes out like so. So, so you can see it's it's pretty messed up. I don't even know if you can get these. Have a look, but I'm gonna see what I can do to get this straightened out. And then it looks like on the underside. It's got almost looks like half inch EMT. And you can see it's pretty well bent up too. So I'm gonna see, got a bender. I'm gonna try to straighten that up. I was looking, it's also bent down there as well. So we're gonna see what we can do with this. Make this thing look a little more, not so beat up. So. All right, so to get these rivets out, just take a drill bit. And these look to be 3 16 so you gotta have the right size or you have to go up a size in the rivets. You just take it and go out the center of it. So I'm gonna use a cheater. I can't find my pipe bender, it must be in the work truck. So, as you can see, I've got some bins in there. So I'm gonna use the backup bucket here and I'm gonna get it right on the bend. I got one of them out of the So right there's a pretty good one. So I'm gonna put it right on there. And I think this is actually aluminum. Now that I've got it out, it's pretty thick walled. Just gonna give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a bend. It's looking a little better. So now 
kind of just got to play with it because the way this is bent, it's got quite a few different little bows. So, looking a heck of a lot better than it did. It's still a little snaky. We'll see. We'll work on it a little bit more. See what we can get out, but it's already improved substantially. As you can see, I worked on a little bit more. I think it's looking pretty good. So, got a little bit of a kick out down there in the center, but it's not too bad. It's just so close together right there, it's hard to get out. But we're gonna put that on there and see what that looks like. I got a little bit of a bend in the other one I'm gonna get out as well. All right, I got them both straightened out. These just slide right back together. And I'll do the other end. But looking a lot better already. All right, now for the fun part. It's, uh, I've got some pretty good kinks in here. And I'm gonna try to take a pair of pliers. Just real easily try to flatten them out. I put it in the vise, but I'm afraid I would just mess it up. So I'm gonna probably end up on it. Right. That one kink right there is definitely the worst. So I may take it on the anvil and try to see if I can just tap that out and hold a piece of metal under and tap it out, but it'll be pretty difficult. So, let's see what we can do. Kind of a little bit of an angle. It kind of dented it up a little up just a little bit, but I'm not really as worried about that as I am just getting it straightened. So this side's all flared out as you can see. So I'm gonna just really slowly If I go too far, it's not the end of the world. But, all right. Looks like I did a pretty good job. So once I get it all kind of uniform, I'm gonna come back and get the bow out of it. So, so far so good. Take just a little bit of time and patience to get it out. So, uh, I actually got a piece of wood that's a little bit thicker than the channel sitting in the channel and then a piece of wood behind it. And I'm gonna try to see, got a pretty good little twist in here. There you go. Oh, it twists a lot better than the edges been, that's for sure. Well, hopefully I can get the rest of this. We'll see. I'm just gonna keep going and working it down slowly and make it work. All right, well, I have spent about an hour on the vise using the backhoe like I did the pipe. Straighten it and bending this thing out. It's still got a few dimples obviously, but pretty much every time when I beat them out on the edges, it swells it back out and bends it right back. <laughs> and that's the problem with aluminum. Once it stretches, it bends, it stretches. And then when you try to make it go back to its original shape, it does not work. It just deflects. So I think that's about as good as we're gonna get them decently happy with it it doesn't look completely like crap so we'll get it all put back together and see what it looks like on the golf cart it was bent out for so long and nobody messed with it it's got a pretty good warp in the edge you can see down through there i'm gonna take that heat gun see if i can warm this up a little bit and kind of curl that back and pull that out a little bit so I'm gonna heat this up real slow. And I've got it, I'm gonna heat it up on the out on the underside. Just in case I do scorch it for whatever reason, it will be on the under and nobody will ever see it. So I think we've got it pretty warmed up. back in. It's probably going to need to be heated up just a little bit more. It's doing pretty good. Not exactly what I want it to. And you can see it's a little bit off going up through there. It's, uh, but it's looking pretty good. I'm getting somewhere for sure, so I think this is going to work. I'm going to keep working my way up here, just kind of put a little pressure on it. <clears throat> you can use a uh, cool rag or wet rag and cool it off real fast just like you do PVC pipe. 
and it'll kind of form the stake. So I don't think I'm gonna have to do that. Seems to be doing the trick. So another thing right here, see where that's worked in. Look at that. So here's worked in, so I'm gonna heat that up and pull that back out a little bit too. But I think this is definitely gonna work pretty good. Already looking a heck of a lot better. got it good heated up. Whenever you do this, you want to make sure that you wear gloves so it does get pretty warm. So just kind of, kind of work it up. Get that fold back where it sits around the car and just kind of hold it for a second. Just work it until it cools off. You can feel a substantial difference in the rigidity of the plastic. Right there is looking pretty dang good. So right there is my rivet hole. Holds it on, so that was all bent out. I got that fixed. So I kind of keep it back in shape. I'd use a wet towel, but I really don't want to get my hands wet. It's pretty chilly today, so it's cooling down nice. And we got down in here, I got that wolf out. So it's looking pretty good. And it kind of sunk back in a little bit. I'm going to heat it up one more time. Pull out a little bit. But as far as the ridge around, I think I got it pretty good. Looking good. Alright, well, I'm going to add a couple more rivets in here because around the edges is still a little off of the rail so what I'm gonna do is use a clamp clamp them together 3 16 drill bit clean it up just a little and 3 16 drill bit So now I've got it riveted all the way around, ready to put back on the golf cart. Alright, and the way I know front from back is drain ports right here. Those are going to go to the back. Got it all bolted on. Looking pretty good. Pretty surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't say surprised, but pretty happy with it. Definitely looks a heck of a lot better than it did. So this thing's got a dump bed on it. And as you can tell, it's pretty rusted out. So I'm gonna clean it up and paint it. What I'm gonna use is a four inch grinder with a wire brush disc. And these things work really well. I mean, it's the best tool you can have for cleaning up rusty metal in my opinion but you want to make sure you get the one with the twisted brushes or twisted bristles they last a heck of a lot longer than the just straight so we're good to work on this Just a short amount of time. I went from that to that. And I'm wiped that down with some uh, acetone or paint thinner and be ready to go. So I'm just going to keep on going, get me a dust mask, and go to town.
looks a heck of a lot better than a lot of dust, a lot of rust. So I got the bolts out of the bottom right here. And I'm gonna take this thing off and clean the bottom of it too while I'm at it for tech. All right, I got it all cleaned up and wiped down. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and paint it. What I'm gonna use is a rust reformer and makes a good base. And any of the rust that's still left, is, you know, clean the crap out of it. But it's pretty hard to get it all off. So this will should hopefully take care of anything I missed. So go ahead and get started. So we're gonna put some new pads on. And I've already got the pads on, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So you got a little Carter key here, and you gotta bend that straight and pull that out. And a lot of times that'll be pretty tight, so that's a uh, inch and 16. Loosen that up. just a little because it's gonna wear a little bit so I'm gonna engage my parking brake and make sure it won't turn so really nothing to it much pretty easy to do and a lot of times I'll just take a pair of pliers and this is a little bit more tricky especially one hand and that pops right back in so now just put your hub right back on yeah, that one's pretty, I'm gonna probably adjust that out just a little bit because it's pretty free. So and I've already got the other side done. So it's gonna be kind of hard to check the parking brake on it, but that's pretty good. But I think I'm gonna adjust it out just a little bit. So what you do there is you just take a screwdriver. And to turn it the other way, if you need, you need to adjust it, there is a catch right here that keeps them from loosening up and you just bend that down and then rotate. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So I still got a little bit tighter right there. I think that'll be good. So park and work on, let's see what it feels like. I'm try to pull the hub off the hub off. So I've got the parking brake engaged. As you can tell, this thing's locked up, so it's perfect. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and take the parking brake off. Parking brake off, so I know it'll screw it up pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the castle nut back on. And make sure you remember what you can lock it. Let's 
snug him up a little bit. That's where the pin goes in. It's, uh, I'm gonna have to turn it back just a touch so the can will go in. Probably would be a lot easier. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, turn it back just a little bit. So now I went a little bit too far. So I'm just gonna a little bit more right there in the middle and now it's a little bit snug and that's the purpose of the retaining pin because it's not tight the retaining pin is going to keep that nut from backing off you don't want that to happen so, get a little tap in there so now all i'm going to do is take a pair of pliers it's probably a really good idea to replace these but i don't have any at the moment so, I've never had one fell on me, but the idea is probably a good idea to replace them because they were to break off. But nut would come off and you're going fast, your tire would go blind and you'd get crashing. So, that's pretty much it. Pretty simple to do. Didn't take too long. So. I got these off Amazon for about $20. So that was about the best deal I could find for sure. It's 10 L O L. Is the part number if you need any, and I think that covers from 86 to I can't remember 92 or something like that. But pretty cheap, fast shipping, so they hold up. Definitely worth 19 dollars. All right, so as you can tell, these seats are pretty much trash. So what I did, I uh, was looking around and looking around. I was gonna get just covers and do them myself, but I found these on eBay. I've already got the little blind nuts in there look really good and they were I think they're about $75 and we got the foam and everything I do is you take this plastic cover off it's got two screws and then this comes right off just like so and then it's got two nuts right here that hold the seat on The other ones were pretty rusted up. So, I'm gonna just tighten those up. And the seat will be installed. I just gotta put the whole cover piece on the back. Got the whole get the screw started. There's two. I'm gonna do the other side and put the back on the other one. Alright, got the new seat back seats on there. Looks really good. 70 bucks, so I don't remember, I think it was 70 or 75 on eBay. Man, saved me a lot of time for sure. I may see if I can get any back pieces for these. The squirrel apparently chewed that one up, but it was covered up with zebra duct tape, so I couldn't tell. But for right now, I'm good with it. And a heck of a lot better than what I had. So, good deal. On to the next project. There is no spring in my parking brake release and as you can see the spring i was messing with and it pretty much just fell apart and fell off it was all rusted up and i couldn't find I, well i found the spring for this year model but it was 14 15, i think it was shipping it was almost 20 dollars so i found this one off amazon for 34 dollars and we'll see if i can make it work and what the kit that was like $20 came with was a retaining nut for the end of that. So I went to the hardware store, got a four and a half inch 5 16th bolt and lock nut. Let's see if we can make that work. Here we go. I'm gonna put that lock nut on there just to hold it in place and we'll test it out. 
like a charm. So I saved myself about 16 bucks. It stays locked. Hit the brake and it comes up. Works good. All right, and there is the uh, part number and it's a torsion spring. And it was supposed to be for 2001 and up, but it's the cheapest one on Amazon with free shipping, four bucks. And it seems to work pretty dang good. It is a little bit of a bugger to get that bolt through there and get the tension on the spring. But for $16, I'll spend five minutes on it. All right, well, I think I'm about done. I'm gonna change those wheels out a little bit later. I'll probably run on those for a little while. We've got some different ones that look a little bit better, but seems to got it painted a little bit funner there. Put the lights on the front. Got the brake pedal fixed. Got the roof straightened out. New seats on the back, painted the bed. I think it looks pretty good. So I haven't really ran it much. I ran it that one night and that was really about it because one of the tires kept leaking down. So I just got a new valve stem put in it. Let's see what this thing will do. Get the ignition on. A little bit of choke. good it runs like the brand new one got that carburetor cleaned out and cleaned up a little bit so if you're ever in the market and wanting a golf cart you can try to pick you one up a little bit cheap do a little work on it or if you've already got one maybe showed you something that'll help you out so appreciate you watching hope you liked the video i sure enjoyed working on it getting it running i love tinkering on stuff like that so Keep watching and hopefully I'll have a bunch more videos to come. Kind of busy at work right now, but we're going to try to keep the videos coming. Please subscribe.